Okay, let's move on to the high fade yep. with the six iron and the high fade with the driver. Yep. Again, not losing much distance, we don't think, do we, if it's done no. properly? No, if it's done properly and you hit it with a full face in the correct loft, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't lose much distance at all. Nice thing about the high fade is you can move the ball up in your stance and it encourages the, the club to go left on the arc anyway and, and hit the fade. So the high fade is a, is a nice, is a nice feeling to have you know you can move it up in your stance a little bit it encourages the it encourages the club to come down and go left anyway because of where where you're collecting the ball in the arc and then from there you maybe just maybe think about staying behind it a touch and and that's really it and again not much not much divot with a with a high shot it's sort of more of a sweep than it is a interesting how tight would you say you hold the club on a one to ten if if one was about as tight as your baby poppy could hold it and ten was arnold schwarzenegger what would you be six or a seven yeah i'm 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 definitely i'm definitely i feel like i hold it tighter than what most instruction books would tell you that I, that's all I can say. It's not white knuckles, but it's it's certainly not loose, and it's it's there's a, there's a nice bit of firm pressure there. Good. Let's hit one more with this, and then we're going to hit a nice high fading driver. Let's fade there. I've actually stopped looking at them. I'm just listening to them. I know they're so good. I'm just I'm not even looking at them anymore. Okay, high fade with the driver to yep. finish this off with. Times when Rory might use this. Ideal tee shot is a high cut. Catch the slope, that big kick. Whole location front right today, a little easier pin. And that's a long way down, buddy. And that's just a chip shot remaining. Wow. You know, I like hitting fades in general when there's trouble on the left. I like going down the left side and trying to work it away from trouble sometimes, especially when there's water on the left. Well, let's talk through how you would do it, what you might feel in your body to create the height, yep. the fade. So again, I think it's so nice with the, with the high fade is you can tee the ball, you know, you can, you can go way up in your stance if you want, because that encourages the club to move left through impact. And, you know, if the club's in a pretty neutral position, it should encourage that left to right shape. So, um, but as I said, hanging back, or stand back behind something maybe doesn't quite encourage as much of a fade shape. So you just, I think you just have to nearly with a high fade, just exaggerate that move from the top of getting it in a position where the club is more, you know, the butt end of the club is pointing a little more left. That's sort of, that would be my, my feeling of it. So again, uh, I think from all of this, from the draws and the straights and the fades, I feel a lot of this in transition. I try to make the same backswing and then I feel a lot of what I'm trying to do in transition. That, that's, a, that's a big thing for me. I think that's a very interesting piece. Uh, we mentioned it earlier in these nine shots. Uh, visualization again, in case Huge. somebody hadn't seen the piece on visualization. <clears throat> Massive. You need to see it before you do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm huge into that. You have to be able to, to see what you're trying to do. That is so important. So when you're going through a pre-shot routine, you're teeing off the first tee, the last round of a major championship, whatever it might be, in your pre-shot routine as you're back behind the ball or wherever yep. it is you choose to be. Just talk me through that process just before yep. we hit this last one. So basically you're, you're trying to figure out, okay, where's my starting point and where's my target? And then I, I think what's been nice with all this shot tracer on TV over the last few years, you can actually start to see yes. tracers of what you want your ball to do. So that's a big, that's been a visualization thing for me is like, I'm gonna imagine I'm watching TV and seeing myself hit a shot and seeing the tracer follow the ball. So it's, you know, that's a nice visualization for me. Not everyone can do that because they haven't seen themselves on a shot tracer before, but that's, that's been a nice thing for me. So I'm looking at, up the left side of the fairway here, there's three trees and there's the middle tree I'm trying to start it at. And then the, there's a tree maybe 15 yards right of that I'm trying to finish it at. And I'm just visualizing that, that shot shape and the height and everything. And then I, I go in there, I get myself set up and I just try to, try to do what I've just seen.
Go right ahead. Rory, I think that's been an absolutely wonderful description of the nine shots. Thank you for doing that. It's really fascinating to, to hear your insights on how you do it, mainly with your transition. You don't really change your golf swing that much, just a little feel in transition. Yeah. You don't change the height of the tee with your driver. You certainly don't aim the club face where you want the ball to finish. No aim the body where you want the ball to start. So thank you so much for that. And um, if you follow these rules of engagement, you're sure to control your golf ball a lot better. Maybe not like him, but a lot better than you currently do.